In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Allow me to introduce myself for those of you who may watch this video but not know me. My name is Father Anthony Andreasity, and I am the Provost of the Brooklyn Oratory of St. Philip Neri. Among its various ministries, the Oratory provides pastoral care to St. Boniface Parish in downtown Brooklyn and Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary Parish in Brooklyn Heights. And this Mass for the fourth Sunday of Lent is being celebrated at Assumption Church. This Mass is being offered for all parishioners of both oratory parishes. And of course, we pray in a most particular way for the safety and good health of us all during this time of the global pandemic. For all of you who are watching this Mass online, and of course cannot receive the Eucharist as most of us normally do at Mass, I invite you to open your heart to a spiritual communion with Christ and with one another, we the members of his body. May our prayers together now give us God's help and strength to remain as faithful followers of Christ, especially now as we are called to serve one another and the most vulnerable in ways that we've never been asked to do so before. So as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and for strength. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us now turn our attention to the Word of God. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, surely the Lord's anointing one is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees, does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel, but Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, There is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. So Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ruddy, a youth handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with a horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm, The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. 
The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. He guides me in the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord, Lord is, is my shepherd. shepherd. There, there is, is nothing I shepherd. shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. The Lord is my, my shepherd. shepherd. There, there is, is nothing, nothing I shall want. want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The, the Lord, Lord is, is my shepherd. shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are the light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather, expose them, for it is shameful to, even to mention the things that are done in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither he nor his parents sinned. It is so that the works of God might be made visible through him. We have to do the works of the one who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is. But others said, No, he just looks like him. He said, I am. So they said to him, How were your eyes opened? He replied, The man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and told me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went there and washed and was able to see. And they said to him, where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought the one, who was, the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, he put clay on my eyes and I washed and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, how can a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the man again, what do you have to say about him, since he opened your eyes? He said, he is a prophet. Now the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and gained his sight, until they summoned the parents 
of the one who had gained his sight. They asked him, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How does he now see? His parents answered and said, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. We do not know how he now sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he can speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews. For the Jews had already agreed that if anyone acknowledged him as the Christ, he would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason, his parents said, he is of age, question him. So a second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He replied, if he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know is that I was born, that I was blind and now I see. So they said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Why do you want to become, do you want to become his disciples too? They ridiculed him and said, you are the man's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we do not know where this one is from. The man answered and said to them, this is what is so amazing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if one is devout and does his will, he listens to him. It is unheard of that anyone ever opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. They answered and said to him, you were born totally in sin and you are trying to teach us. Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, do you believe in the son of man? He answered and said, who is he, sir? that I might believe in him. Jesus said, you have seen him, and the one one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshiped him. Then Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who see, those who did not see might see, and those who do see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to him, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you are saying, We see, so your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. This past Thursday, Father Michael and a few friends were supposed to go to Haiti to visit a parish and a school there that he and a small group of others have been trying to help since that devastating earthquake struck the island region, the island nation in 2010. Of course, they did not go. As we all know far too well, the COVID-19 pandemic have forced us all to change our plans as well as also completely upending the rest of our normal existence. When things like this happen, an earthquake that affects millions or a pandemic that now threatens billions, it is only normal to ask some fundamental questions about life and death, about good and evil, and about God's role in all of this. Confronted with a man who was born blind, the disciples of Jesus asked, who sinned, this man or his parents? When the earthquake hit Haiti, an American televangelist asked whether this might be because of a supposed pact that the Haitian people had made many years ago with the devil. Who sinned, the Haitians or their ancestors? And now while we all face a global epidemic, some people are asking questions like this also. Why would God allow this to happen? What did we do wrong to deserve this? 
who is to blame. And as part of this, sadly, some people are now scapegoating others while pandering in vile racist words and stereotypes. We might like to think that when women and men are faced with suffering, such as earthquakes or pandemics, people would never raise such questions or look to find answers with words of bitterness or hatred. But on some level, these asking of these questions is quite a natural human response to misfortune, to ask why would things happen like this, to ask who is to blame. We desire to find order and meaning in the world. For if we can figure out how misfortune and disaster are connected to the past, then maybe the terrible things we are facing right now might be avoided again. And somehow we might hold on to our belief that the world is, despite all its appearances, a reasonable, just, and orderly place. And now, as we have to face a natural emergency, we have begun to ask some of these questions ourselves. The Gospel for today shows us how Jesus approached these questions, the misery and misfortune of another, of a man born blind, and how Jesus did this in actually a completely different way. In response to his disciples' question, about why suffering has happened by asking who had sinned, this man or his parents, Jesus immediately responds that it was neither the man nor his parents that sinned. Rather, the Lord says that meaning in this man's suffering is to be found not in who might have sinned in the past, but in the saving work of God now made visible and manifest to the world through Christ. And then next, and then Jesus spits on the ground, makes a muddy paste, and rubbing it into the man's eyes, gives him sight and restores him for the first time even to the fullness of human life. Now let me be clear. I'm not saying in any way that Jesus was saying that God blinded this man from birth so that he could come along decades later and heal him. Rather, what I am saying is that Jesus, when confronted with human suffering, he reminds us that often we ask the wrong question. The disciples were seeking an explanation to where misfortune came from. Why was this man born blind? Why do innocent people suffer today? Instead, Jesus redirects the intention of his disciples, and he also redirects our attention too, from asking about the reason for suffering, and redirects our attention to do to the ministry we are now called to do, to alleviate the suffering of others, to care for one another. The source of the misery and the misfortune of the man born blind remains hidden. The reason why the world is suffering from this pandemic is beyond our comprehension. But what is visible, what was visible to the people of Christ's time was the healing and the saving power of Christ. What should be made visible to the world now is the light we now should bring into the lives of others. Into the darkness of the man born blind, Jesus brought light both to the man's physical blindness and also gave him the light, gave him the eyes of faith so that he might recognize the power of God as the one who healed him. Having been enlightened by Jesus, the man becomes himself a source of light. This remarkable transformation from darkness to light is echoed in our second reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesian. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Notice that St. Paul says to the Ephesians, not simply that they have received light <clears throat> in their darkness, but rather they have become 
light, the light they have received, they are now called to become, to light the way of others. Faced faced with human misery and misfortune, most most especially right now in our world today, we who are called every day to be true followers of Christ might, should not let those inevitable, inevitable questions about why, why is this happening, prevent us from joining his ministry of light. As we all now face the suffering and dislocation of this pandemic, let us, open, let us ask God to open our hearts to find generous and creative ways that we can be light to one another, light in new ways to bring healing and restoration. And may God have mercy on us all. We now once again profess our faith in God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. In this time of great human suffering, let us now come before the Lord with our petitions, as well as the needs of all throughout the world. Let our response be, Lord, have mercy. For Pope Francis, Bishop DiMarzio, and all the church's leaders, that during this time of darkness, they may be beacons of Christ's light in all they say and do, we pray. Lord, have mercy. For all elected officials, that in the face of this pandemic, they plan and work together in cooperation with particular care for those who are most vulnerable or alone, we pray. Lord, have mercy. For our health care workers, first responders, and those whose jobs are critical to our daily existence, that they remain safe and strong as they continue their work in support of the common good and the health and well-being of all of us, we pray. Lord, have mercy. For all those who are suffering physically from the effects of the coronavirus, that they may find healing in comfort and in the care of others who act as agents for God's mercy, we pray. Lord, have mercy. For all the dead, that they may find Christ to be not only a loving Savior, but also a merciful judge, we pray. Lord, have mercy. As we present all our needs to our Heavenly Father, let us now pray them through the intercession of our Blessed Mother. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen.
My friends pray that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord accept this. We place before you with joy these offerings which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as it is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the host of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Nicholas, our Bishop, the clergy, and all who minister in your church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Philip Neri, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command informed by the word of God, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternity. Let us pray. O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is pleasing, worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you for joining your prayers with ours today, with mine today, at this, this celebration of Mass. I invite you to, to come back to this YouTube, the Brooklyn Oratory YouTube page regularly as we plan to continue to post masses of our devotions and words of inspiration as we all continue to pray for one another during these difficult days. Be also assured that each day all the Oratorians, those who live here in Brooklyn Heights, as well as the wider Oratorian community, are holding all of you in our prayers in a most intentional way. I invite you to bow your head as we pray for God's blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and to sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk, walk in the shadow of death, and bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.